Sri Ram Subramanian is coming up next. Yeah, he can he can take over. Yeah, there's there's a lot of rappers that I read on the internet that why DMR is getting into open science. So I actually did a community <coughs> research. Why what is the because there's a lot of questions why DMR is getting into open science. Because DMR is so much profitable to them, right? Why not stop? Why they're getting into open science? So you can have a look at Okay, that. everybody loves open science, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, wel welcome Sri Ram Subramanian, um, also known as the Cloud Dawn. So look for him on Twitter. He also has a Dynamite blog out there. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Sri Ram. Thanks, Susanna. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. So I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about what kind of workloads we can run on OpenStack clouds. Uh, Kenneth Hui talked a little bit about uh, the design principles. How does your workload decide what architecture do you want? And he dealt in great details about if you want to have VMware and OpenStack or what is op VMware more suitable for. I'm going to talk in a different perspective. I'm going to uh, not deal with the infrastructure. I'm going to kind of highlight what kind of workloads that people have had success with, have had failure with running these workloads. Um, I try to give enough details. These details have been obtained from the open st published user stories. <laughs> few things are confidential, few things are NDA. Wherever I'm able to mention the name of the um, client, I was able to um, uh, provide the information. But, but if you need more details, if something I can talk offline, please feel free to ping me. OK, cool. So uh, this is kind of uh, the adoption curve that we are seeing, uh, particularly around how enterprises are adopting OpenStack, right? This, this follows with the generic public cloud adoption. Uh, thanks to uh, Swarley here, uh, I adopted this for OpenStack. Um, when, when small players or early adopters are coming, increasingly adopting OpenStack, enterprise was like waiting, okay, it's not even a real thing, I don't have to use this one, it is not gonna satisfy me, or suddenly they realize, oh my God, I need to take this on and I need to go with this, and you see a rapid adoption these days, right? So uh, that's, that's what is happening with OpenStack world. This is for the infrastructure though. However, when it comes to workload, right, like what do I run with the workload? We see a different pattern here. Hey, I know everything, it's all cool, I can take my SAP workload, put it on OpenStack, Oh no, that's not gonna happen. Okay, maybe I can fix the infrastructure, I can fix this, I can port the application, I'm gonna try now. Then I go down, I, f I see some issues, okay. Maybe this application is not really suitable, I can't really port, maybe I can give one more try. It goes up and down like that. But finally, like people realize, maybe there are a few things that I can do, there are a few things I cannot do. I can run few applications, I should not run few applications, right? So uh, we are kind of at a phase where like, we have reasonable idea about what is good, what is not good, or what is a good application to run on OpenStack, right? So um, again, like going back to the perspective here, it is not like you have a new shiny thing called OpenStack and you have the infrastructure and then try uh, uh, moving all your applications into the OpenStack cloud. That's not the right way to approach this one, and people have been realizing that that's not the right approach. Y you kind of need to take the reverse approach, right? You might have a different application. <coughs> is, is the OpenStack cloud suitable for you? So uh, this, is, this will say like what kind of applications are, what are some applications that we have had success with, and if you have those applications, then OpenStack is a good choice for you. If it is not, then maybe you should reconsider. So uh, why does the work choice of workload matter, right? As I said, like if you have an Oracle app or Cobol app that you've been running for 30 years, can we just put that in? Yeah, sure, it's gonna work fine, right? Oh, it's not syncing up, um, that's okay. So um, it's, it's, it's kind of trying to fit, um, I had a nice graphic here, but it was my mistake, uh, it didn't get synced up, so. You know, when you're editing your slides right before your talk. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so uh, shoot, I'll try one more time, see if not. Do you have the Dropbox folder, or do you have the Dropbox? Uh, yeah. Apologize. <coughs> I have everything here. Which one?
sorry, guys. Just pretend it's a demo gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can I switch the screen, please? <coughs> okay, here we go. So uh, it's kind of trying to fit a square into a round hole. If you have a wrong workload, what's going to happen is uh, you start with an, if you have a wrong infrastructure, I mean, if you have a wrong infrastructure for your workload, for instance, if you have a, if you have a highly available application or that needs to be always on, OpenStack infrastructure is not going to help you with it. So uh, you're going to end up with unmet SLAs, which is going to show up as um, degraded application performance, which is, in fact, it's, it is going to result in loss of revenue for you. Finally, you might end up firing your IT, which we don't want. But then, then comes, like, do we have any applications which are more suitable? If so, what are they? Let's try finding out. So. Um, to f before we find out uh, what are more suitable applications, I want to take you through like s some use cases that we've been having since early adopters, right? We let's walk through some of the applications here. And one thing that I want to stay away is the famous pet versus kettle analogy here. I'm trying to finish this uh, presentation with other analogy. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, obviously, a like, lot of dev tests were the first use cases. People try to uh, play with, can, I, can they have their developer environment on OpenStack Cloud? Or even, I'm not even talking about POC here, I'm talking about like, your developer environment or test environment at OpenStack Cloud. So that's, that's been like favor favorite use case and people have had success with, people are still having it. Uh, some of the early adopters, some of the early uh, tries were like around e-commerce applications. PayPal was one of them, Mercado Libre was one of them. They had their shopping cart or they have their storage backend on that one. Um, and uh, CERN, you, you would have seen a, a fantastic presentation from Tim this morning and you've been following from 2011. A lot of high performance applications, compute intensive applications, uh, people have been trying on OpenStack Cloud. And then also uh, along this time, uh, time frame, people went, wanted to play with just Swift, right? <coughs> compute was stable, Nova was stable, and then um, we had a mess of quantum, and then people were still figuring out about uh, how do we go with quantum or Nova network. Um, but Swift was stable relatively early on, and then so Swift was a very common use case there, just used as a backend, either for backup or archival or, or just like storing large objects. So that's kind of the first wave I've, see, I've seen, like for the, in the first two or three years of OpenStack. Then more e-commerce applications came along. People tried having compute with storage, not just the compute, but with a little bit of storage that needed, right? That's when like uh, Cisco's, for instance, Cisco's, um, the WebEx application is a good example. Then more backup and recovery. And then a um, lot of analytics, right? So um, when you say analytics, like you need, you have a lot of storage backend, but a lot of compute uh, um, need for processing the data. So those were like second wave of applications. Um, we, th at this point, I'm talking about like 2012, 2013, 20 early 2013, 2014 timeframe. We saw some production workloads moving into um, op OpenStack. We have had use cases, uh, demos around the OpenStack summits. Some of them POC, some of them P uh, production, but some we s we've seen some ad increased adoption at that point there. Around this time frame, people also tried, okay, um, I need to have OpenStack, but I'm not really sure I don't care about the workload, I'm just going to try porting. I've had an app running for 30 years, maybe I can move that. No, you can't do that. Can I run a Sierra map? You can't do that. So we will see why we can't do that a little bit. Can a little bit talk before about that, but you know, people had failure in this one. Then people start talking about, okay, net new applications, kind of a unicorn here, and uh, this is a French unicorn, so you see Eiffel Tower on him or her. So uh, what are these applications, right? These are uh, elastic. Nearly stateless are stateless applications. They are consisting of uh, compostable services, and they are designed for failure. So um, they don't rely on having a highly available infrastructure. They don't expect the uh, VMs or compute to be always on. If something goes, they can, they can kind of heal themselves. So do they even exist? Can we even get too close to them? We'll figure out. But what has been realistic is that, that um, at least some of some of the real production workload that you are seeing across different clients, different customers, is that that it's not like one set of infrastructure they have. It's a combination of this infrastructure, part OpenStack, part something else. Could be bare metal, could be virtualized, could be VMware, could be something else, right? So um, 
But what is running on OpenStack is tends to be this net new applications, elastic, scalable, replaceable. Whatever you don't want to run on, uh, all, um, which is not always on your COBOL app, CRM app, your whatever app that you have been running, doing it, uh, you don't even, it does not even worth trying to port it. Just let it run. <coughs> Maybe, yes, you will have the problem of having two different uh, infrastructure, two different panes, but you always had that. It's just that, it does it make sense? Maybe it doesn't make sense to have multiple environments, but but you know when you compare it with the system admins, ease of life, but there's uh, not having losing your productivity or losing your ROI by, by the choice of wrong application, wrong infrastructure, that doesn't make sense either. So this is this at least like will give you the application that you've been running, their their ROI, their lifecycle, everything, their SLAs, they are being maintained. But but it's a little bit difficult for you. But at least this is something that that's working. So that we we talk a little bit about like what was happening in the OpenStack uh, user space. Now we'll try to highlight what has been really published or uh, successful use case. Right. So we talked a little bit about e-commerce before, and and uh, more than one summit we have seen this talking about. And uh, so uh, PayPal, eBay, their internal private cloud is using OpenStack, and they have had success running their shopping cart applications. Whatever you see in your PayPal site, the shopping cart, they, they've had success in running on op OpenStack cloud. Um, I mentioned about Mercado Libre before. They are the uh, largest e-commerce based in Brazil. They've had success storing using OpenStack Swift for their uh, objects, uh, as an object store, storing their uh, images of all their uh, products. And uh, they've had success running terabytes of data in that in their back end. I'm not very sure if they use comp, uh, uh, the compute for their, I mean, use, use run their any of their applications, compute applications on OpenStack back end, but this is what I can confirm. And um, we have had HPC, high performance computing applications, a lot of compute, tons and tons of compute node, again and again, like we say, CERN has been like a pet or a poster child for OpenStack. Um, this is like, one of the most recent data, right? Like they have more than 1,300 servers running with more than 13,000 cores, uh, applications for physics set, all computensive applications used by uh, physics across the world. That's one great example. The other compute intensive application is from Argon National Lab. So their backend, uh, they had the compute for bioinformatics applications. This is an ANL lab, but the applications that we're running were bioinformatics and uh, some genomic processing applications, right? Again, this goes back to compute with uh, little or less storage requirement. Then comes the big data analytics, right? This is, this is uh, many have had success with small startups. Uh, you're gonna say a little bit, little bit more about a large automated autom auto manufacturer also using this one. Why is it very helpful is uh, you get a, you need, you need map reduced job, which, is, which are elastic by nature, right? So they are a very good fit for, sorry, the OpenStack compute is a very good fit, fit for such elastic compute requirements. You need a lot of storage to store your data, and, and Swift is a very good um, fit for that one. Again, you might need to run some custom applications to analyze the data, or you might do some reporting, which is, which is, which can be need, we can be highly on, but they don't have to be like, um, they are not like as highly on as like SAP or CRM or ERP applications. So big uh, OpenStack infrastructure feels, fits nicely with, with such an application requirement. M many, many have had success with this one, which, is, which follows the paradigm of elastic compute with lots of storage. Then comes the financial applications. If you look at financial applications, uh, it's, they, are they tend to be compute intensive. They may require, uh, they may or may not require a lot of storage, but uh, we have had success with at least one big financial applications company. They use their internal private cloud for hosting their um, financial applications. They've had applications, uh, like legacy applications, they they are not having. They are not. They are not running their legacy applications on this private cloud. But whatever they could port over, whatever they could rewrite for OpenStack Cloud, they've had success running that one. But their final setup would would look like having a combination of both ported over and legacy applications. Uh, the other important reason for financial providers to choose OpenStack or internal private cloud is data sovereignty. Their data re remains in their data center, whether it's Swift or mostly Swift. So it's going to stay in the data center. So, so that gives them the control over where their data is residing, and uh, so it, it makes a very good use case for OpenStack. Then comes the healthcare. 
We saw a couple of them under ANL. We have had at least more than one healthcare service provider using OpenStack for their uh, competency workloads. These workloads tend to be either um, informatics or genomic workloads. Again, these are compute intensive workloads. Uh, they, need to have, they tend to have some storage needs, but it, they are mostly compute intensive. Then comes the automation. This is not the cool BMW demo that we saw yesterday and today. This is, I'm going to talk about one of the top 10 auto manufacturer. They, they have a published use case under the OpenStack site. So what they did was they wanted to, um, wanted to evaluate OpenStack Cloud for their application need. So they were having telematics application running. They need to have in-car applications running, all of them feeding data into the Hadoop backend, and they use Hadoop for processing that. And again, they have a reporting infrastructure for uh, getting nice reports out of this. And uh, they, were, they, they were comparing VMware versus other infrastructure, and sorry, OpenStack versus other infrastructure. OpenStack tended to be uh, cost effective and uh, working in, in case of their POC. So you can go to openstack.org slash use, use cases and find, uh, find more information about this, uh, about this use case. And of course, BMW. And then, then comes the uh, category of telecom applications, right? Telecom providers have always uh, have been early adopters, one of the early adopters of OpenStack. They've used more than, more than uh, one, sorry, more than handful of telecom adopters have been, telecom service providers have been using OpenStack, not just in the US region, APAC, European region too. So their applications tend to be, um, running their services, and more importantly, they run internal marketplace for their telecom ISPs. If their ISPs have a specific workload, a Swift application, a web application, a Java application, these, these workloads tend to run on marketplace, and that marketplace runs on OpenStack Cloud. Um, another use case that, uh, another successful workload was a mobile application development platform. So if you're developing a mobile application, you, you probably use an SDK, like an Android SDK, or. Windows Phone SDK, if you're one of those minority uh, developers, right? So um, if you want to host that development platform, at least one service provider had success in hosting that application development platform on OpenStack infrastructure. The other category that have we have had success with is uh, Medium. Um, again, media needs to store a lot. Uh, the use case here is, is using storing, storing a large amount of data. So it falls nicely into that one. Some, some media... Um, some animation companies have had success with running their animation compute workloads, so animation workloads, which are compute intensive on OpenStack Cloud. To kind of summarize, the workloads that we have seen are either compute intensive or compute intensive with minimal storage or large storage. So um, these, are, these are all like the, some of the workloads that people have had success on OpenStack, running on OpenStack. So um, what does it tell you? And, and also, we also some some workloads that people didn't have success with, right? So what does it tell you? So uh, kind of reiterating what Kenneth was making earlier, and then use your application. Let the application decide what infrastructure that you need. Do not go behind a shiny object, the VMware OpenStack, right? What you have, make a decision based on the application that you need to run. If these are scalable, elastic, replaceable, composable applications, at least at least close to that one, then choose OpenStack. If they are highly on, or if they need to be, uh, the unit, you have a um, 0.99 SLA, or you need to be always on, then you need to choose VMware or bare metal. Having said that, there are some ISVs that are, uh, that are uh, uh, providing solutions to make your applications highly, highly available. Um, you might see them in, in, in the marketplace today. So if you, if, it, if you want to have those solutions, yes, maybe then you can consider running highly available or uh, highly SLA, high, HL, high, high SLA applications on OpenStack Cloud. Until then, if you do not have those applications, you may want to consider some other options. The other thing that you, uh, you want to consider is that that is not just the application, it's just not the cost. How, what, is your, what is your paradigm? What is your process? How is your IT operating, right? The big difference is here is just the agility that OpenStack Cloud is going to give you. If you are used to having your, your provisioning taking one month or two months, now you're, you're going to get it in, in less than minutes, right? At least less than a day. And that's a big change. And you, you might have internal politics, you might have internal conflict, you might have internal problem with your IT doing <laughs> that one, but you need, to, you need to resolve that. So take care of that, look at that. How, how, how are you going to, it is, it is a tool to make you work more effectively. 
but it comes with internal conflicts. It, it, it changes the paradigm. So be prepared for that one. Work on that. So it is not just the infrastructure. It is a combination of infrastructure, your people, your processes. Consider them all together. Cost is just one aspect. Free doesn't make it really free. Free doesn't make it really inexpensive. But your total cost, still, your TCO could still be higher. So don't make that as a primary criteria. So these are the top three best practices that I would suggest if you want to consider OpenStack Cloud. If you have any more questions, please, you can ask me now or you can find me offline. One final thing is that um, there are good use cases published on the OpenStack.org site. Look at the super user cases. You can reach out to the community. Community is very helpful. Or do a Google search. Any questions? Thank you.